Welcome everyone to the City of Solitude. This location has 31 areas of interest, video chapters available for each. I will also represent my location with this on-screen map at the start of each location so you can follow along and not get lost. Additionally, I will give a small lore-based description to add a little flavour and backstory. This is taken directly from the guidebook I'm referencing. Throughout each location, I will also provide on-screen text for all relevant objects, items, and NPCs I point out. You can also find a complete summary of everything in their relevant categories at the end of the video. Feel free to skip to that, find the specific thing you are looking for, then use the video chapters for exact locations. Additional things worth mentioning, I have graphically overhauled Skyrim to present a much nicer viewing experience. None of my mods affect the game space, though I will mention Diverse Skyrim, which livens up Skyrim by adding additional NPCs, and Relationship Dialogue Overhaul, which only affects dialogue and so will not impact on the integrity of this and future guides. Next is Commands. I am using Unlock to get through doors, Toggle Gov Mode so you don't see my stamina bar, and T Detect, which turns off AR detection so I don't get interrupted. By the end, I would have walked you through Solitude and all its 31 points of interest, excluding the quest content, though there are always some exceptions. I have refined many things from my first location guide, but due to the scope of Solitude and other locations, I'm sure to miss a few things, so scroll down to the comments, where I will list out additions. Also, drop a comment of your own, mentioning my mistakes, errors, or missed content, so I can compile them into my own comment. Without further ado, let's get started. Solitude is said to be the jewel of Imperial Skyrim, ruled by Yal Elisif the Fair, widow of the late High King. It is home to the headquarters of both the Legion and the Thalmar. Part of the reason for this is the imminently defensible nature of Solitude itself. Set upon a great stone arch that towers over the mouth of the Karth River, and surrounded by the soaring peaks of the Hafinger Mountains. Solitude is both a reinforced and breathtaking stronghold. Given the city's name, it may be ironic that over 80% of the whole population lives within Solitude's walls, but this is testament to the city's political importance formidable defences, and diverse population. Bard's College is also located here, as well as the sumptuous Blue Palace. Both are constructed atop the huge, natural arch that the city rests on, affording spectacular views over the Sea of Ghosts and Hal March to the east. Solitude's accessible docks and wharfs are in relative calm waters, making trade one of the many reasons why the wealthiest Nords hail from this capital city. Solitude is the one true cosmopolitan city of Skyrim. Hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of lore. I think it's a worthy addition to these videos going forward. But let's get started with our first location within the city of Solitude. The first thing you will notice from this map is we are starting at 4. This is because the traditional map of Solitude does reference three locations outside its walls, but I did ultimately decide to ignore them as I didn't see, they didn't seem important enough to reference. They were two guard towers and the traveling Khajiit merchant. Enough explanation though, we start here at the main gate and the market district. Here a variety of traders ply their wares in the south western district of the city. Aside from the traders, the marketplace is dominated by the executioner's platform and the market stalls, which feature a well said to be one of the oldest structures in Solitude. On the right, as you enter Solitude for the first time, a small crowd has gathered to watch the execution of Rogvir for crimes against the Empire. He allowed Ulfric Stormcloak to escape the city after killing the High King. Unless you interrupt, which is a crime, Rogvir is beheaded while the citizens watch. 
like those of Sarmon. If you want a better viewing point, or to potentially intervene, go right up the spiral staircase. Cross, and from here you could potentially get a shot in undetected. From the main gate, we move forward. Our destination is the first on the left, the Winking Skeever. The Winking Skeever is the only tavern in town and is sometimes host to a variety of interesting folks. Corpulus Vinius runs this establishment. The minstrel Lissetti plays here in the afternoons and evenings. This establishment is famous for wine and mead imported from Riften. And should Corpulus die, his son Sorex Vinius will run the inn. Starting with the notable NPCs, when you enter on the right, in the corner, leaning up against the wall, we can find Belrand. He is a potential follower with marriage prospects. Turning right, and at the end, sitting at the table, we can find Sorex Vinius, who I mentioned before. He can't become a follower, but can be married. Behind the counter, we can find his father, Corpulus, Traitors, civil wars, who is obviously an innkeeper, selling a room and food and drink. From the innkeeper, on the right we can find Alum E. He is a potential fence after completing the Thieves' Guild. Take note of the many potions found in the establishment. There are many, but I will not point out all of them. We can see two more on the end here with our first chest. Many more here. Coin purse and a knapsack to steal from. Going upstairs, again on the left, bookshelf and cabinets here. On the end we can find our first strong box and business ledger. More potions within the second bedroom on the top floor. Going back down down again into the cellar we find our second chest which concludes the winking skeeva from the winking skeeva just head across to the radiant raiment Come in and shut the door. twin sisters andari and tari run the store and three guesses which one I'm taking upstairs. The store vendor is Andari, oh, Let's see if we can't find an who sells a sort of jewellery and apparel. But more importantly is Tari, who, out of both sisters, is the only one you can marry. Thank God. Before we move upstairs, take note of the quantity of loose items. This makes it an exceptional location to loot. However, make sure you do this when the store is closed, as both sisters are very proactive in following your location, making it extremely difficult to loot during the day. Behind the counter, in the left-hand corner, we have a strong box. Now we continue and go upstairs. Here we can find three bedrooms. In the middle and on the right we have our business ledger and a chest. Moving out we have the third bedroom with two loose coin purses. And back downstairs and down again into the cellar we have our last item and last chest which concludes the Radiant Raiment. Moving on over again to the other side, we have Angelina's Aromatics. Angelina Morad runs this shop with her niece, Vivian Onus. 
They live above the shop. The shop itself is a tiny affair consisting of a simple small room with a counter. The walls behind the counter are lined with strange ingredients, potions, and dead animals. Here we have Angeline Morad herself. You're a traveler, correct? Talking to her for the first time does prompt the start of a miscellaneous quest to look for her daughter in Whiterun. Oh, don't worry, Angeline. That is definitely high on the Dragonborn's priority list. Fighting Alduin comes second. But more importantly are her goods. And yes, I am referring to her body. Why find her daughter when I have her mum right here? She's an apothecary, so have a guess what she sells. That's right, pure, homegrown, ganji. With some potions and food when you get the munchies. And of course, being an apothecary, the store is lined with their goods. Making it another exceptional location to steal from. Moving down the end, if I could get past, we have the Alchemy Lab. Out back and up the stairs. On the first right. We have another location with a few notable objects worth stealing. And in the only other notable area, we have the store's business ledger with a strong box on the bookshelf. And just like all the last locations, if we continue down and down again into the cellar, we can find a chest, which does in fact finish off Angelina's aromatics. And to finish off the main buildings within the lower market district, we have Bits and Pieces. To bits and pieces. This is a general store run by Seymour. And although he does tend to get in the way, Kaed, her son, does offer some assistance. Simon sells, well, bits and pieces. Some armor, some weapons, potions, scrolls, and more. On the ground floor, we can find two display cases. And upstairs, first bedroom on the left, we find the store's business ledger and strong box moving on down again to the cellar like many stores before it we have a chest very quick but that does close off bits and pieces from here and somewhere in the market district you can find Noster the one-eyed you can throw a coin at him and get the gift of charity. Bless your kind heart. But remember, boys, this is what happens when you touch yourself too much. From bits and pieces, again, if you travel right over, you can find Jari Ra. You're passing through solitude? Maybe you're looking to make some easy gold, yes? This is an Argonian with a variety of interesting and illegal schemes. He usually mooches around this area, sometimes visiting Angelina's aromatics. Continuing his dialogue, we quickly race through it. Starts the Lights Out quest. We like to collect things. I knew you looked like a clever one. So Jari has a definite boat fetish, and in order for him to get close to one on the docks, he does, needs us to shimmy up the Solitude Lighthouse and put the fire out somehow. He does suggest drinking a lot of water beforehand, for reasons I'm not too sure about. Getting as much distance from Jari as possible, we come up to the marketplace and a well. Timmy's gruesome remains can still be seen at the bottom, but don't worry, there are vendors here as well. Avetti sells wine, 
Jala sells fruit and vegetables. And Adbar sells fish. Though not for long, as I'm told his wife will take over from him when he dies. Remember to sleep with one eye open, Adbar. From the market district, we had left. Then right. To a spiral staircase. Going down. Leads to the south exit. To Solitude. From here on the right, we can see the Solitude docks. And on the left, the beautiful arc that Solitude rests upon. Back in, and up this time. Leads to the battlements. Which offers a very nice view of Solitude on the left and the right. On the end we have an inaccessible exit or entrance to the Emperor's Tower. And behind us we have Solitude's Windmill. Which seems to have no point at all. From here, muster up all your parkour skills and jump off the battlements to the right. Remember to aim for the smelter, as only pain makes you feel alive these days. Looking like a boss, look straight ahead as the blacksmith questions your sanity. Over. To the Fletcher. The Fletcher is run by Fiada and his apprentice Joannan. And if you ever wonder where I make most of my errors, it is definitely trying to say their names. Off to the left, we have the Golden Ribbon of Merit, our first skill book in archery. To the right and at the end, we find Fiada himself. At the Fletcher, bows and arrows for the he sells bows and arrows. And a single lockpick. To the right and at the end, we have three display cases of various lock difficulty. Turning around, take note of the numerous potions you can find here, and the fourth display case on the counter. Turning down into the left, on the right in the first bedroom we can find our chest, first chest, heading out and upstairs. On the right, we find the store's business ledger. And in the last bedroom, again, numerous potions can be found. And the strong box. From the Fletcher, we now head over to the blacksmith. b -Rand is the owner and works for the Imperial Army and the City Guard. Though he can do work on the side. He is married to... Seymour, the owner of Bits and Pieces, and again their son named Kaid. His apprentice Hadvar is patiently waiting for the old man to die so he can finally run the store. Here you can find a full complement of crafting locations, a blacksmith's forge, workbench, grindstone and tanning rack. Being a blacksmith, Baron sells weapons, armor, and assorted crafting and smithing materials. Before we head inside, we can see a blatant reference to Avatar, The Last Airbender. Hopefully Bethesda paid a pretty penny for the rights to this. Heading inside. Inside we have another grindstone. A large volume of ingots worth stealing down the end chest heading upstairs we find hemvar and in the bedroom the business ledger and strong box and the refugees a light armor skill book. Heading right, you'll come to the courtyard and its crenellations. 
The ground level features what I can only presume to be all of Solitude's guards. This is where they practice with sword and bow. With Captain Aldous overseeing this so-called training. He was also the mad lad that oversaw the sickest fuck execution you saw when entering Solitude for the first time. Heading up the stone steps to the crenellations. You could be a sneaky boy and go into alternative entrances to the Thalma headquarters. And off to the left. Castle door. All the way on the other side, the Temple of Divines as well. And if you're feeling a little daring, you can also head left back to the Market District. Heading back down to the ground level. We have Castle Door. Castle Door itself dominates the city's northern district. Its thick walls, and that's thick with three C's, are imposing, protecting its inhabitants from invaders. Unfortunately, no matter how thick or tall the walls, nothing will stop your mum. The fortress houses the Imperial Garrison and the Temple of the Divines. Heading inside to Castle Door. In ages gone by, there was just the Castle Keep. But as the city grew, walls were added to the, uh, the surround the other newer buildings. During a long period of peace, a separate palace was built for the Jarl. Castle Door then became an oversized gatehouse, eventually converted into the city's imperial garrison. Ahead you will find General Tullius, the leader of the imperial forces in Skyrim. He lives and works here with his second in command, Legat Reich. This main level of the castle is given over to the battle map of Skyrim, where General Tullius and Reich plan the countermeasures against the Stormcloaks. It is here that you can join with them during the Civil War. Westline. Starting from the main entrance of Castle Door, so we don't get lost. On the right, on the table, you can find the Legend of Red Eagle, which starts a quest. Continuing forward again, there are only two main rooms on the ground floor. Here, General Tullius' war room, and on the right, Legette Reich's room. Input, lewd sexual reference about Tullius and Reich. On the left, we head upstairs. Left again, you can find a door which leads to the crenellations. And on the right is General Tullius' bedchamber. If you search his jaws, you can find hand lotion and a sock for when Reich isn't available. Back at the main entrance, again, we head right and down into the garrison barracks. This area is run by this guy. Seriously, how am I meant to know how to say these names? On the left, on a small table, you can find a book telling the unedited true stories of the lives of the Solitude Guards. The Rear Guard, if you know what I mean. This is a light armor skill book. The last location within Castle Door is down and on the left. Commit a crime in Hafengar and the guards will throw you into the sex dungeon, I mean, the prison cell. Atar the Jailer runs this place and was the executioner of Rogvir, who we saw beheaded upon entering Solitude for the first time. He also starred in a small Bollywood show on BBC, Game of Thrones. Perhaps you've heard of it. The upper level is a circular balcony overlooking the dungeon level. Directly on the right, in the corner we can find a coin purse. And continuing around on the right, we have an interrogation room. A torture room. And here we can find Atar in his office. And down on the right, we have the evidence room. Besides your belongings... In the chest, if you were imprisoned, you can also find a black soul gem and elven armor. The astute among you might have noticed the massive hole in the wall that makes me question the intelligence of the city guard. The hole is used to grab your belongings if you decide to escape through the secret passage. 
if you head up and out and around. If it's your kind of thing, you can head down into the cell viewing arrow. Feel free to heckle and taunt the prisoners to your heart's content. The circular area contains seven cells, most of them locked. Vajata, a Stormcloak soldier, can be found in one if the city is held by the Imperials. If you find yourself in one of these cells, take note of the crumbling mortar on the wall in the back. This is the secret passage I mentioned earlier. And does lead to the hole in the wall to grab your belongings. Proceed forward. And down. Where you can find another coin purse. And the ladder to your freedom. This leads out to the market district and is a once only deal. If you choose this less than honourable escape, the guards will repair the walls, which I guess does show some semblance of intelligence. In the courtyard and from castle door main entrance, we head out and directly to the right, we have the Empress Tower. Don't be fooled, this is usually completely locked and inaccessible. This is the residence of the Emperor when he is in solitude and is only accessible during the Dark Brotherhood questline. Revealed by the Stormcloaks for his betrayal in the Markarth incident and admired by the Imperials and Loyalists for his steadfastness during the Great War, Titus Mead is somewhat of a tragic figure. Being forced by the weakness of the Empire to make deals with those he despises, Ethalma, in order to preserve the Empire from total destruction. On the ground floor, we have the currently visible throne room. To the left, you can find the kitchens. Back out. To the left and upstairs. You can find a fairly empty bedroom. And at the end of the hall on the right, you can find a usually locked door, only accessible during the Dark Brotherhood questline. Before going in, turn around and you can find a catalog of weapon enchantments and enchanting skill book. Through to the banquet hall. Here the Emperor and his trusted cohorts eat and talk politics. And out the back. Again, usually only accessible during the Dark Brotherhood quest line. You have the exit. Which leads to the windmill with no purpose. Heading back out into the courtyard. We head west and up the stone steps. To the Thalma headquarters. The hated Justicars are headquartered in this garrison. Effectively run by the Thalma, they oversee the terms of the peace accords signed by the Emperor. Principally, this means rooting out Talus worshippers. Elwyn is the head of the Justicars. Sometimes she forces her opinion on General Tullius. He has little use for her advice, but his Emperor has commanded him to follow her orders on matters related to the treaties. Mostly this location is relatively empty, with the Thalmor more constant to rule Skyrim from the remote embassy in the mountains above Solitude. I think we can all agree that no matter your playstyle or playthrough, it is a universal truth that the Thalma suck balls. Besides from an attic and a bedroom upstairs, there is nothing here worth note. A map of Skyrim can be found on the counter, and a range of books and potions can be found within its walls. From the crenellations, head out and down through the courtyard to the left and through one of two open entrances to the Temple of the Divines. Before heading inside, take note of the small courtyard used for the wedding of Victoria and Asgia during the Bound Until Death quest within the Dark Brotherhood questline. It is here that you can kill or pickpocket them for two unique rings. If you don't acquire them during the quest, you can find them on their bodies within the catacombs of the Hall of the Dead. 
formerly the Temple of the Nine Divines, this is the largest temple in Skyrim. Unlike the other temples, it reflects the imperial view of all eight divines being equal and represented. At the end, you can find locations for all nine divines. Mara, Julius, Akatosh, Dibella, Tanareth, but with one missing where the Shrine of Talos should be. Xenathar, RK, and Stendar. If you side with the Stormcloaks in the Civil War and take solitude for Ulfric, then this shrine will be reinstalled. They each provide specific blessings. But if I know you, and I do, these blessings will never be used at opportune times. Heading back to the entrance and taking the right upstairs, we have our first bedroom, which holds a coin purse and a chest. Back down, and on the opposing side, we get the second bedroom, nothing of note, but a door that leads to the crenellations. From here, we head back down through and down again into a small area with a bedroom and a firmly sealed door, which can only be opened during the side quest, The Wolf Queen Awakened. It leads to a second dust-filled wine cellar and a hole in the wall and the Potomar catacombs. This is the only area in Solitude I won't be exploring as it is heavily linked to a very specific quest. Back in the main courtyard again, we head left. And left again, out, finally, from the Castle Door District into the Avenues District, which is sometimes referred to as the stately avenues of Old Solitude. This is the residential section of the city. Our first location is on the right. The Hall of the Dead. This mausoleum is filled with numerous vaults, and the dead of Hathinger are buried here. As the local priest of Arke, Steer is the cemetery caretaker, although this could just be his demeanour. And here is the wingman himself. Steer believes darkness is drawn to solitude. And upstairs we can find his bedroom. With a chest behind the door. Heading back down. And down again, we come to the catacombs. You probably heard it in my voice, but I've been rather giddy since coming to this location. And now I get to show you where I had my first kiss. And if you can believe it, I actually got to third base. Let's go take a look. Don't worry too much about the skeletons. They only like to watch. Here you can find a crate. Useful for keeping your protection safe. Heading on out. Oh wow. This certainly brings back memories. At the end. You can find an exit. Which leads to the graveyard. Which, if you're looking for advice, is a very romantic place to bring a date. Somewhere close by, you can also find... Dervenin the Mad. This lunatic beggar wanders around the Hall of the Dead Graveyard and down the avenues. He talks about his abandoned master, which is the prelude to the Daedric quest, The Mind of Madness. He, he also requests a gold from you, oblige, and you'll receive the gift of charity. From the Hall of the Dead Cemetery, head up the stone steps, 
And just across the way, we come to Victoria Vissi's house. There are three entrances on the left, up the stairs, and below, and on the right. Victoria heads down from this house to supervise the shipping and distribution of goods from the port. She is an obviously wealthy woman and as mentioned before is about to be married to Asgir. Her house reflects this opulence as do the shadow marks etched near the main doorway. As mentioned there are three entrances and the main floor of the house is comprised of a hallway, a living area and a kitchen. On the right from here we can find the first chest and one of the other entrances. Heading back and up the stairs, we find a balcony and the main bedroom with a safe. Heading out, back down and down again into the cellar. On the left, we can find an open display case with a dwarven battle axe. Skipping over. It's by a manor, which is the player house. We will come to that, back to that at the end. We head down and across to Advar's house. This is the first of three terraced houses, and they're all flagged with a shadow mark. Advar is the street merchant that lives here. And is a rather small place bordering on Rundown. His wife Greta and daughter Savari live here with him. Besides some food and alchemy ingredients, there's not much here to loot. You can find a chest under the stairs. Another upstairs that is empty with a small coin purse on the right. From outside, we head right to Aveti Sands house. This is the middle terraced house, flagged as well with a shadow mark. Aveti is another street vendor and lives here with her invalid father, Octave San. If you're looking for a dilf to marry, Octave San, who you can find at the Winking Skeever, is a prime candidate. Heading on in, and down the end, you can find a food storage. So if you're looking for cheese, this is an excellent location. You can find a knapsack to the right. Upstairs you can find another. On the end you can find two chests. One of which is empty. Out again and to the right. We'll come to the third house in the terrace. And the third merchant in the market store. Jala's house. She lives here with her friend and lover, Atar, and as you can see, is quite a poor looking home, reflecting her lack of wealth. There is a pile of ingots in the back if you want to steal them. A knapsack on the right as you enter. And on the left, in a corner next to a kettle, Song of Promir, a two-handed skill book. And upstairs, you can find two chests. From here, we turn left to the Bard's College. A large building where you two can be the pop sensation you always dreamt of. In all seriousness, this place is a joke. Before heading inside, outside is a large stone courtyard where the burning of Old King Olaf Festival was historically held. When you enter the college for the first time, Varimo here will introduce himself and ask if you want to join the college. The answer is go fuck yourself. You're only here for two things. The Song of the Alchemist, which is an alchemy skill book on the counter here in the library to the right of the entrance, which only appears after obtaining the quest, bring one Song of the Alchemist to Lami, who can be found in the Thaumaturgist hut an alchemy shop in Morthal, as well as a second skill book upstairs to the right, and on the right, 
at the very top of the shelf is The Buying Game, a speech skill book. Moving on into the left, down again. On the first right, we have Erica's house. Erica is the Thane of Solitude, so of course he gets special treatment with a large grand house. His basement has nothing but food, a knapsack, and a ridiculous amount of empty mead barrels, which illustrates that Erica is a clear alcoholic, but is most likely necessary to endure being Thane to the Jarl. Upstairs, in the far left-hand corner, we have an arcane enchanter. And on the main floor, you can see potions and alchemy ingredients. Heading up again, we have a balcony with a small library and his bedroom with a single chest to steal from. On the left, we have the skull of his late wife being right next to the bed. I'm sure it's a very powerful aphrodisiac. Melorin can also be found either here or in the Blue Palace and is a journeyman alteration trainer. Right across from Erica's house, we move up. The Bryling's house. Bryling is also a thane, which doesn't make the title very coveted. Erinskar Iron Hand can be found inside acting as her guard. Thankfully, as you can see, a quick command makes it disappear. The wine cellar has nothing. Modern knapsack and some scattered weaponry and clothing. Someone really needs to teach the citizens of Skyrim how to put their shit away. Upstairs, and again, you can find a bedroom and another with a chest to steal from. Leaving here, we can finally head out down at the end to the Blue Palace. Recording some of these locations can be very tedious, so if you made it this far, give the video a like and consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate the support. Solitude's otherwise awe-inspiring landmark is its ornate palace, where the newly appointed Yao Ellis the Fair resides. It is built on the ruins of the old palace, which was burned to the ground when Queen Potama was finally defeated in the War of the Red Diamond. There is only one entrance here at the end of the Avenues District. First up through the receiving hall is a pair of impressive curved staircases and guards dotted around. To the right, you can find a chest and a door that leads to the Pelagus Wing. This part of the palace is sealed off and uninhabited. The wing is where Pelagus the Maid lived before becoming Emperor and is said to be cursed. No one will set foot there. If you begin the Daedric Quest, the Mind of Madness, and obtain the key from Falk Firebeard, you can journey into the depths of the long dead ruler's mind itself. Turning around and off to the left side, you find the kitchens resided over by Odar, the chef. Turning around, facing the entrance, to the right, you find a wine cellar. Heading back out, and to the left, down the corridor, you'll find a set of bedrooms. On the right end, down in the cellar. Heading back out into the main entrance. Heading up the stairs this time to the Jarl's throne room. This is the main chamber where the Jarl Elisif the Fair resides and listens to the news of the day and any worries her subjects might have. With the recent death of Yar Torig, his beautiful wife, Elisiv, rules Solitude for now. She is a young, 
Beautiful Nord woman, wholly unsuited to rule. The real power lies with General Tullius, technically an Imperial advisor. Personally, Elisif is sympathetic to the Imperial cause. She has a personal hatred for the Stormcloak leader Ulfric, who killed her husband, Torig, and is just politically savvy enough to realize that her rule and probably her head are in a place only so long as she is useful to the Empire. She believes that should the Empire regain control of Skyrim, she would be made High Queen. On the left of the Jarl, we have Bolgir Bearclaw. So named because as a youth, a bear turned on him and he swiftly cut its paw off with his axe. If anyone was going to make you feel inadequate, it would be this guy. Though I think with his rap sheet, it's only fair. The Jarl never goes anywhere without him, and that includes the bathroom. He is utterly loyal and highly competent, and that includes with the other large pole he has at his disposal. What he lacks in creativity and social sensitivity, he makes up for in ferociousness. Up next is the court wizard, Sibyl Stentor. Although she has served the Jarls for over 20 years, she still looks no more than 18. Obviously, she is using the strength of 100 seal to great effect. Though gossip around the palace suggests she is but a simple vampire. However, I remain confident that she is a skilled ninja, trained by Tsunade herself. Being a court wizard means that she sells spells as well. Among other scrolls, enchanted jewelry, and soul gems. And lastly, is the steward, Falk Firebeard. Ex-companion member turned bureaucrat and treasurer for solitude. He is loyal to Elisif, but frequently gets frustrated at her foolishness. But the most importantly is his name is in reference to his hair. This piece of information is clearly why you're all here. He is also the reward giver for the quest, the Wolf Queen, awakened, issuing a uniquely enchanted solitude shield. The last area within the Blue Palace is off to the left of the throne room. Here on a low table you can find Lost Legends which starts a quest. Off to the right you can find the Court Wizard's Chambers. A chest and an Arcane Enchanter to use. Also take note of the various potions and items that are worth stealing. Potions of blood can also be found which does mean that I was unfortunately wrong. What a shame. Out and to the right. You can find the steward's chambers. And at the end of the hall, we finish off the blue palace with the Jarl's chambers. To the right on the dresser, you can find biography of the Wolf Queen, a speech skill book. And next to her bed, an unusual gem. The first in solitude, but the fourth overall. Also to the right, a pair of necklaces of high value. The last location within Solitude is the player home Proud Spire Manor. To purchase this home you must first complete the two quests, The Man Who Cried Wolf and Elisif's Tribute. Upon completion, Elisif will permit you to purchase the house from Falk Firebeard Hello, for 25,000 gold. Ownership of this home and helping five citizens within the hold is required to become Thane of Hafanga. Speaking of the house, Kyle, we will found, find her or him at Proudspire. Let's go take a look at it now. From the Blue Palace, we're going to head all the way down through the avenue to Proudspire. One additional thing I forgot to mention, to purchase all the available decorations for the player home, you will need another 14,000 gold, totaling 39,000 for all the all the decorations and the house. And here is Jordis, the Sword Maiden herself, your house Kyle, and follower with marriage prospects. 
Proud Spire is the largest player house, I believe, and offers all the normal services a player house usually comes with. Down below, we can find weapon racks, mannequins, arcane enchanter with some free soul gems. On the other side, a fully stocked sort of kitchen area, an alchemy lab, a child's bedroom, proceeding back up the stairs, and again, we have the main main bedroom with the safe and chest. And here it is, the unusual gem, which is the second in solitude and five overall. Well, that completely concludes all 31 locations within Solitude's walls. Let's warm up to the fire in Proud Spire and do a summary slash recap. Remember to pause on each section as it may not be up for long. I will also have on-screen notes and the map which will correlate to location numbers when applicable. Even though Solitude is bigger than Whiterun, it does, however, offer far less in some areas. I will not go over loot and valuables this time, there are far too many, and as I don't offer specific locations, it seems rather pointless to mention. I will, however, go over my recommended thieving locations first. I'll leave this on the screen for a little while. Most major shops and stores are worth stealing from, having numerous valuable items just laying around. These ones were particularly good for reasons I list, and I do actually recommend the upper level of the Blue Palace. It is unguarded and very lucrative. Next up is the Unusual Gems. There are only two available in Solitude. One is in the Player Home Proud Spire on the upper level, and the other, again, in the upper level of the Blue Palace in the Jarl's Bedchamber. Seven skill books are available in Solitude. Song of the Alchemist in the Bard College does require the quest Bring One Song of the Alchemist to Lami. A very short list indeed here. Only three in Solitude can become followers and two others that are obscure marriage prospects. Skill trainers are up next. We only have three. One for Alteration, Destruction, and Speech. Unfortunately, I did not show Gerard Germain in the Bard's College, so I will do that now. Gerard Germain can be found at the Bard's College or in the Winking Skeever. Here he is over here, next to Sorax Vinius. Again, Master Speech Trainer. Here are all the locations for crafting stations, alchemy labs, arcane enchanters, smithing, and cooking. Well, there you go, guys. In as much detail as I could muster, I have gone through all of Solitude's locations. So let's take one last look, one last walk around Solitude as I close things off. If you have watched till this point, if you watched all through all of it, I thank you immensely. I am so happy, I'm so glad that I was able to get through all of Solitude into an hour, under an hour. I, I really wasn't quite sure. I did, however, learn a lot from my first video, taking some heavy criticism from my wife, among others, and I believe that this guide is superior to my last in every regard. Hopefully that shows. This, just like the last one, took a massive amount of work. So if you found it helpful or entertaining in any way, give it a like, 
consider subscribing as I definitely will be continuing to produce more of these at least until I'm done with all the major cities and holds. Again, I am only one guy with one mind, so if you have any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, any comments at all regarding this, then I'd love to hear them. I am producing these guides for you, so your input is very important. For now, thank you again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and I see you in the next one. Bye for now.